What's going on miners? I'm Jump Change XD and in today's video we're going to be taking my RTX A2000 and we're going to be putting these copper shim mods on the units to see how they perform with the memory temperatures inside Hive OS. So if you guys want to see a comparison and have a how to, this is going to be the video for you. Let's do it. so here we are with all of the a2000s in this octo miner so i have had some issues with this rig not really so much issues it's just i've noticed the memory temperature is getting pretty hot on a lot of these cards like gpu number eight right here this is actually in the sixth slot from the left but this is GPU number eight. I will leave an image right here on the screen so you guys can see the order of the Octominer. Now I'm gonna be pulling the hottest cards I can find in this group and we're gonna be putting copper mods in them. We're gonna see how they actually perform. This guy right here, I did yesterday live. If you guys didn't see that video, go check it out. But I will be doing a slower step-by-step -step today in this video. So we're gonna be taking number eight out, like I said. I'm also gonna take out number seven. I forget where that is. And then a couple others that are getting pretty hot. You guys can see right here on the screen so now let's get this out let's get this set up start ripping it down and i'll show you guys how to install this copper mod all right so this is the lineup of stuff that we have here just want to go over it before we get started my iFixit kit, I do have this in the Amazon store down in the description below. Please go check it out. If you guys would like one, this thing is awesome for like all electronics. You're going to need some thermal paste. CoolMyGPU.com has the MX-4 available on their website. These are the copper shims that you're going to need. As you guys can see, these are... Uh, pretty thin they're a little thinner than a penny and they replace the thermal pads which is pretty neat you're gonna want some sort of a toothbrush or just scrubber some alcohol to be able to scrub the thermal paste and the you know just clean the gpu in general then you're gonna need an a2000 of course i'm gonna wear some rubber gloves during this just to keep my hands a little clean and some paper towels or like a microfiber towel is probably the best so let's get the camera set up we're gonna strip this thing down and i'll go over it step by step all right, so right here we have the RTX A2000. Now we're gonna have to flip this over. We're gonna have to remove the screws on the back. We have eight screws here, but first we're gonna take off six. So we're gonna start with these little ones right here. Okay, now we're gonna look at the front face of the unit. As you can see, there is a screw here and a screw here. All right, so now once you have the screws removed, we need to get this clip dislodged. So you can use a small flathead or just a knife of some sort. I like to stick it right in the little groove here and just give it a little twist just to pry it apart. Now, once you get the fan shroud unplugged from the right side here, as you can see, this is just a mini blower style GPU with a small heat sink right there. And now what we're gonna do is flip this over and we're gonna remove these two screws holding the heat sink down to the GPU die. Now this should come right off. And this right here, might give you a little hard time to get apart. So what I did was I gave it a little twist back and forth just to start it moving. And once it moves, it'll start to break the suction. Cause you don't wanna like pry this. You don't wanna break anything and that's it. All right, so this is what the inside of the A2000 looks like. You can see the thermal pads are here on the memory chips there, there. And you can see it referenced right here where the pads are. So now we need to clean this all up and clean this all up. All right, so once we're inside the unit like this, what we do is scrape away this stuff. I have a plastic little uh, shim here. I mean, I have used a small flathead. You just gotta be careful. So now this is where the rubbing alcohol and the toothbrush come in. All right, so now I took some alcohol on the toothbrush and I'm going to just scrub the thermal paste with the alcohol, get it cleaned up. And I'm gonna wipe off all the oils that were right here as well with the brush. You just don't wanna scratch the brass teeth right there that's the only thing you don't want to hit so just be mindful of that and you guys should be good now we'll take a paper towel and wipe it off so this right here is the copper shim and as you guys can see it fits perfectly over the memory chips obviously we need to install the thermal paste and all that before we get to it but after we end up cleaning up the heat sink because i like to get all the cleaning done before we apply anything new so this is where we need the mx4 thermal compound or thermal grizzly whatever you guys decide to use it's entirely up to you you're going to put thermal paste on every memory chip there is on this card and on the gpu die itself now i'm going to take my little spatula and i'm going to 
just spread this all over the memory chip and when you're done it looks like an absolute disaster <laughs> but you know what it is what it is that's what you're supposed to do so now we have thermal paste all over the memory chips and the gpu die we're going to take the copper shim and the copper shim is going to sit right over the memory chips just like so make sure it's nice and flush then what we have to do again is apply more thermal paste up this side up this side and obviously we already have it on the gpu die so that is all set all right so now once you have it situated with the thermal paste on the right and left side we're going to take the heat sink flop that directly in place on top where it was you're going to kind of squish it down just a little bit then what i'm going to do is flip it over want to line up the holes as you guys can kind of see the brass going to put this plate back on and get these screws back in and that's literally it you can see the copper shim in there that's the bottom you can see a little bit of thermal paste but you know what it's all right so the only downside to this like i said is the thermal paste just getting all over the pcb and ever having to clean it would be a complete nightmare all right so now that this one's done we can put it back in place all right so what i'm gonna do here is i have some blue painters tape as you can see i ripped a couple pieces i'm gonna take some blue tape i'm gonna put a piece here and i'm gonna put a piece here because those are the two that I did. I did this GPU and this GPU so far. Now we gotta find the other three that we need to uh, choose out of the bunch that is actually performing the worst. All right, so seven was really bad. I'm just gonna put one there. We have number four that's right here. And then number two that's right here. So I'm gonna do these three and then we will turn this entire thing on and get it back up and running. There's actually a couple other cards in here that are hotter, but my decision to pick these three right here are because they seem to be thermal throttling at the higher memory temps versus the other cards that are kind of in the 41, 42 area. So I'm gonna do these three cards. Let's do it. All right, I got those three cards all set. Now you can see we have five done and I have seven left to get more copper shims for. Let's jump into the computer. I wanna show you guys how good the temps are on these five cards in this situation. All right, so here we are in the PC. Now let's go over real quick and look at the Octominer sheet right here with all the numbers. We have GPU one that we did, two, seven, eight, and four. So if we come over here, we look at GPU one, we're looking at 68 degrees on the memory. And for reference, the one right above it is 80. Then we'll come down to GPU four. We're looking at 72 degrees on the memory, which is, you know, again, referencing another one right below it, which is 80. Then we'll come down to GPU seven, 70 as well. All the other ones are 80 that we didn't do basically. And GPU eight is 74. So the lowest card that we did not do is actually GPU 10. And that is 78 degrees C. And I didn't touch that one on purpose. I wanted to make sure that my best card stayed as true as possible just to reference and see how much these copper shims actually dropped these cards so i'm interested to get another shim and throw it on gpu 10 just to see how much better it makes it or if it only really brings it down to around 70 but either way this is a win-win in my mind when i saw the temperatures of these cards getting upwards of 90 degrees on the memory it's obviously scary and then your cards start to thermal throttle so i mean i really can't complain so spending the 18 dollars or whatever it may be to buy one of these copper shims think about the price of thermal pads over a copper shim thermal pads you're going to replace in the next year a copper shim you're just going to clean off and repaste it in my opinion it's worth buying the copper shim so what do you guys think? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's not too hard to install these, but I will leave a link down in the description below for coolmygpu.com. There's no affiliate with them. I really just like the product and the overall plan here is to hopefully prolong the life of my cards overall. I mean, I think that's what we're all looking for as GPU miners to get your GPUs to last as long as possible. But if you guys did appreciate this content, please go down here, hit this like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you haven't seen this video or this video, Please go check them out and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.